All right, and just before our first major topic, uh, first major conversation for today, which is uh, going to be on the new political platform uh, that has been formed by former INEC uh, chairman and a couple of other people. Let's uh, talk a little bit of history, and we're going to be going back to sharing something that happened in 2016 that was done mostly to preserve history. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking of um, African-American history. It was, uh, it, it is called rather the uh, Museum of African-American History in the United States. Um, which was called, or on the, of course on this day was launched by former President uh, Barack Obama. Um, it had been, you know, something that had been in the works since 1915 all the way to For 1917. About a century. Yeah, modern century. And then it, finally in 2003, uh, they were given to go ahead to build, uh, to go ahead and start uh, the building of the, unit, of the museum. And the site was eventually selected in 2006. And, um, and this is very interesting. It was a design that was submitted by Freelon Group, Ajaye Associates, and Davis Brody Bond. Apparently, there might be a Nigerian um, company or Nigerian person in this mix here. Um, the, and uh, that um, design was eventually selected in 2009. Construction began in 2012, and it was completed in 2016. It is the world's largest museum dedicated to African-American history and culture, and it is ranked as the fourth most visited uh, Smithsonian Museum in its first full year of operation. The museum has more than 40,000 objects in its collection, and only about 3,500 are on display. Um, so just, just a little bit about the museum. Um, uh, the, it's called, once again, the Museum of African-American History and Culture. Hmm. I think this is one place I would like to visit um, when I visit the U.S. because it just is packed with so much history of the black American in that country. When this was eventually launched, there was a three-day festival just to commemorate and to celebrate. It featured dance, music, poetry. It was just a lot of celebration. You know, it, it said that the black American needed to feel that pride of place in the U.S., their forefathers had been born there, taken away from African, African countries, you know, over to the U.S. And eventually they've come to see that place as their home, even though there's still some form of racial segregation um, regarding the fact, you know, that the skin color is black. But the fact that these American people, these black Americans have lived there all their lives, that's basically all they've known. That, that respect needs to be there, that respect for African culture, African history, and the black person in the U.S. So this really was a historical moment, the opening of this museum in the U.S. on this day. Um, beautiful cultural galleries there, and lots of things that really just takes you back um, to your forefathers in Africa. So yes, good one. You know, and I think it's also, you know, because of the importance of history mm -hmm. and, you know, how they've also been able to see how, you know, how vital it is to maintain um, history and, um, you know, have a place where people can always, you know, you know, reach out to, you know, to learn more about what their, what their past Connect was like to their, their roots. Was yeah. You know, in Nigeria, there's always been criticism, you know, with regards to our um, preservation of history and preservation of, um, you know, where we're coming from. Um, museums, you know, are almost non-existent in the whole country. Um, history books almost do not exist. You know, if you go online and check for information on certain things, parts of Nigeria's history, you would find absolutely nothing. Um, history books um, actually exist. I studied history. History books exist, but not to the depth that you would have expected. You know, the, the funny thing is, I learned, I learned more about African history reading books by foreign authors. And that's just the irony of it. Because we um, have always believed in oral tradition. You know, the reading writing thing uh, came about with, you know, colonization. So we believe in oral tradition. But we know the challenges with that is that the memory fades. You know, your memory can be edited. People forget. So that really has been the challenge. So there are history books, just to clarify that. But we need to do much more regarding preserving by, our history. History that is written by a foreigner is not your history. If you don't have enough history that's written by people who actually live through or pass through, you know, that those bits of information to people still, you know, in Nigeria, then it's How, almost... Nigerians you know, have written history. history books. Nigerians have... We're just saying that more needs to be done. It's not, it's not like it's not existent. Of course, there are. But more needs to be done regarding preserving our history through using museums, through writing more books, through telling our stories in the media and all of that. All right. First major conversation for today, we're going to be back after this short break and we're talking about the new political force. Uh, as always, every four years, there's something called a third force 
This time, it's been you know pushed by from a uh, chairman of uh, INEC, Atahiru Jaga, Pat, uh, Professor Pato Tomi, uh, from our Governor Donald Duke, and a few others. And uh, we're going to be talking about that after the short break here on the breakfast. <laughs>